Variation Analysis, VisVA, integrated with Team Center Visualization. Why do we use Variation Analysis? For the simple reason that variation exists. Parts have tolerances, which means they're not exactly the same each time. And fixture pins have smaller diameters than locating holes in parts. It's difficult to avoid variation. VisVA is the tool we use to calculate how much variation we should expect to see in our assemblies by design based on the parts we have and the assembly process. In addition, the software also tells us what is causing the variation so that we can focus on those elements which contribute the most and see if it's possible to optimize them, to reduce or at least control the variation and improve quality. And as a benefit, this can all be done virtually. And we only need four types of input for a VisVA model. Measurements, what do we need to control? Parts, the components in our assembly, which can just be the latest CAD design. Processing, how the parts are assembled. And tolerances, the GD&T requirements. The one thing that ties all these inputs together is features, holes, pins, surfaces, features that can locate or constrain one part to another or can be measured. And because VisVA is integrated with Team Center Visualization and JT, the CAD Digital Twin, the features are virtual. We can select them directly from the screen and creating a model is an interactive process. But first we need to gather the input information. And to do so, we need to liaise with several departments. Quality, design, manufacturing, and fabrication. And suppliers too, for the parts that they provide. All contribute to variation analysis, which is more of a dimensional management activity. In return, VisVA results are used to gauge capability and identify possible areas for improvement. And once you've gathered all the information, you need to write the VisVA model, called a process document, or PDO, which is the tree structure that we see here. And it includes all of the inputs that we've talked about before, each with their own node. Measurements, parts, process, and tolerance. Then you simulate the model and analyze the results. I'd like to demonstrate the software now where we are going to analyze a sample model. But to analyze the results of a VisVA model, you have to first understand, or at least be aware of, what went into the model. So let's start with step one and gather, or in this case, review the inputs. Starting with parts information. Our model simply consists of the engine assembly that we see here. So these are the parts that we need. And because VisVA is integrated with Team Center Visualization, we can gather them with JT files. Next, measurement information. We'll keep this simple and just have one measurement, the distance between pulley centers, specifically here to here. Which takes us to processing information. These are called assembly operations in VisVA. I have identified two main types of assembly operations in this analysis, the first of which I'm calling axis and stop. You can think of an assembly method as a group of object and target feature pairs. That is, for every locating feature on the pulley, the object, there is a corresponding constraining feature on the pump, the target. In this case, our first pair is the pulley central hole and the shaft on the pump. This pair defines the axis. To let VisVA know where along the shaft the pulley is meant to be positioned, we need to specify a translation stop, these two surfaces, and the pulley will locate like this. Usually, it's very important for an assembly operation to fully constrain our parts, but there are no features to set the rotation position of the pulley. Fortunately, this will not affect our measurement because all the pulleys in this analysis use the axis and stop method. 
The second assembly operation type in this analysis is what I will describe as the surface and two bolts method. As the name implies, the primary locating features are a pair of surfaces, here and here. Now, unlike the pulley location, the pump assembly is not meant to rotate. So we need some constraining features to prevent this from happening. To do this, we will use two of the four bolt holes that we see in the pump and the block face. And the pump assembly locates like this. This VA will allow us to use all four bolt holes, but the minimum number to completely fix its orientation is two, as seen in the other examples of this assembly method in our model. Now a word about tolerances. You see, every VisVA model is associated with a tolerance library that you can customize so that standard tolerances are automatically applied to certain features. Our model uses this tolerance library, so every whole feature will have one standard tolerance, and every plain feature will have another. Now that we're more familiar with the inputs, we can continue with writing the model. I'm not going to write the entire model. I left it incomplete so I could demonstrate a few examples of the process. Here is the model as it currently stands. You can see we're missing a pulley. The notes up here are a summary of what needs to be done in order to complete the model. I need to add a pulley, create some features, an assembly operation, and a measurement. First, we'll add a pulley. And one way to add a part to our model is to import a JT file. We can add features to our pulley by selecting the geometry, the axis, and stop. We can also add features manually. This will be our measurement point at the center of the pulley. Now to add the pulley assembly operation. We're going to include all of the feature pairs. Move pulley to alternator. We can specify the object and target parts in the properties window, and this VA will add all of the feature pairs for us. Lastly, we'll add the measurement operation. I'll just copy the description and specify the measurement type. So be point to point. Selecting the parts in the viewing window highlights them in our model so we can find the features that we want. So just specify some limits. Press minus one. Now we're ready to simulate. In just a few seconds, we have 5,000 simulations plus a contributor report. The measurement summary shows us that we have an overall variation of 2.5 millimeters. With nothing to compare this to, let's look at the contributor report. There are three main contributors, but the top one has an 86% effect. Clicking on this in the report shows us those features that are causing this effect. The bolt holes which locate alternator bracket 2, which we can safely say is this part right here. If we don't know what to do next, we could try to animate the assembly to see what the extremes of this measurement look like.
Let's take a closer look. The animation does confirm the contributory port and suggests there would be less variation if the distance between the bolt holes was greater. So let's do it. Let's imagine a virtual redesign of Alt Bracket 2, one that spreads the bolt holes apart and extends to the base of the block face. We don't even need to wait for a new JT file. Using the engine block as a guide, we can get rough coordinates to create the features manually. Then all we need to do is create the assembly operation, which uses the new locating features in our imagined part. Here's one that I created earlier. All we need to do is activate it. Disable the original and rerun the analysis. The overall variation now is 1.1 millimeters. Checking the contributors, we can see that the locators for our new bracket are still have an effect, but it's a lot less. And when we animate the assembly, we can see that our new virtual bracket is less variable. Perhaps these analyses will help identify other areas for improvement.